Artery recordings. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Shan Dan from Artery Recordings, doing another video blog right now. I got Ryan Seaman on the uh, line, and uh, if you're not familiar, he's the uh, drummer in Falling in Reverse. He's played uh, in a billion bands on tour. I Am Ghost, Jeffree Star, Vanna, Aiden, a million others. Um, but he's also a very talented uh, you know, manager that's that's dealing with a lot of uh, bands, kind of breaking them into the industry. Um, which uh, brings me to my question for today, which is... Uh, you know, the importance of a manager and uh, kind of what they bring to the table for bands. Well, the importance of a manager, I, I'm just going to go off the bat right now and okay. say that if you're, if you're starting off as a band, if like you're, you're, you're starting from the like ground level, like just nothing, I don't even think you should have a manager. I think you should learn how to do the basic fundamentals yourself. And then once you, once you get to the point where you need a manager, like once you just can't, basically the manager is the guy that's going to help you get to like the next level. So mm. just even before, like I, I won't work with bands that don't know like what they're doing for themselves. Yeah. As it's like, why, like being a manager, you're supposed to be like a teammate. You're supposed to be on the sidelines, like rooting them on, you know, and you're, you're basically there to like give them advice and you're there to like, basically again, just bring them to the next level and like bring something to the table that they can bring themselves. You know, and but the manager and band they absolutely need to be a team. So, I mean that that's that's my two cents. But basically, what what I would do for a band like you know, assuming is I I've, I've been through the ropes, I've been on tour, I've seen everything out there. So I would use like the uh, the platforms that I have to help build a band with with them. You know, so because like they basically you know new people they they basically dominated their their scene in like mm -hmm. Southern California. And then when I came in the picture, I just helped them get, you know, again, to the next level. And now they're, they're going on, on tours, you know, they, they have tours from now until like August of next year. Absolutely. But, and that, that was all you're doing too, because you had your foot in the door and you've, you've been doing this so long that you kind of know which, you know, you know, which steps to take. Whereas I kind of feel like, um, with a lot of unsigned bands with no background in the music industry, they tend to have this kind of like Josie and the Pussycat Dolls uh, approach. Like you've seen that movie, correct? Of course. Yeah. So the, you know the plot is these girls in the band walk in front of a van, and the guy stops, and he's an A and R, and he's like, "You're signed, and now you're famous." <laughs> yeah. yeah. And overnight. At all, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's it's one. I mean, some people get lucky like that, but. uh you know the, the ones that I know that succeed are the ones that like know how to do a lot of it themselves, but then they just need somebody to come in and take them to that next you know step. Yeah. So, but Absolutely. I always bands like if you're starting out, only just worry about what's going on at home because you can't control what's going on out there. And then when, once you have that seed and it's starting to grow in your hometown community, people will hear about it. Mm -hmm. If kids are talking and it's meant to be, it'll be meant to be. If that makes any sense at all with so anything. So if but, a band starts taking off and they've, they've got something good, it tends, like managers and, and booking agents and uh, labels, they tend to come straight to the bands. Whereas, you know, if, if a band's just like reaching out, it, it, it works sometimes. But if you're doing something right, people usually approach you, correct? Correct. Yeah. The, the, way, the way I've noticed, you know, good careers is, is because, I mean, like people at labels, they get hired. They're the ones that get hired to go out and find the band. Yeah. But usually, I'm going to tell you a lot of the times. Like when you when if you're just cold calling a label and you're just submitting something like a lot of the times it, it just won't get heard and like somebody at the label wants to feel like they're the ones that found something if yeah that make, I mean sometimes it works you know but the ones that are meant to be are the ones that usually have created a platform for themselves yeah myself as well like I I A and R at, at Artery and you know I uh, I I get a lot of emails like we'll just get cold copy paste messages where it's like. <laughs> Good, you know, you never know. You might find a diamond in the rough, but like, if you're working all day, you're not you're not trying to go through like thousands of submissions. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to find something that's hitting, like on the internet and in in like a, a town where people are. I'm just saying from a label perspective. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll you know I'll check them out. You know, of course, and and see if they got something there. And and a lot of times there's something. You know, there's there's a band that's just a diamond in the rough, like you said. But uh, a lot of times they they don't have the uh, the proper kind of business forte to talk to you directly you know where they they're very cold and, and that's where you know an, another benefit to having you know a solid manager they can kind of speak the lingo and not sound crude or you know uh push the wrong points you know right 
you know. no, I, I agree with all those things. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that was basically just my two cents, man. It's and it doesn't matter like if you're it, you know I'm just saying this. It doesn't matter if like uh, if you're a band that used to be. I, I'm going to give you like a small example, and I'm not going to like throw anybody under the bus. Yeah. But uh, there was a band that I was talking to about opening up for Assuming We Survive, and it's it's a brand new band. And not a lot of people have heard of them, but they all come from like other bands. Okay. And so I told this said band, I said, listen, like you're not in those bands anymore. And it doesn't matter if you were in like the biggest band in the world or the smallest band in the world. You have to start from ground zero. Mm-hmm. It does not matter. You know, like when my band came out, we, you know, Ronnie had his backstory. Like I had my story. I mean, Ronnie was like the, the, the focal point and, and the star and everything. But like there was a story there for sure. And, you know, our first show ever was that chain reaction, you know, mm-hmm. like Ronnie was in Escape the Fate. They were like headlining like the Avalon and like playing all, you know, sort of stuff. But we're like, again, brand new band starting off the chain reaction. Mm-hmm. And then there just kind of rose. And then we did Warp Tour, you know, and then we did Key Club and then we did like, you know, Roxy and, and then the Will Turn. And then now it's like, it, it's just, we built, we built something though. You know, we came out of the gate. Yeah, he had a backstory and he had fans and everything, but it's like, you still have to prove yourself. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's almost yeah. branding too. You know, it's like you you've got a new name, a new look, new sound, and uh, from there, that's when you have to get it kind of pushed in people's heads as being in being in like you know said old band like would would be awesome. You know that, but that doesn't necessarily translate into like what's happening now. You know, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense at all. So, I mean, this said band is playing with with uh, with assuming we survive very soon. Like. I'm I'm just I'm constantly trying to work them in in the area that uh, that they're from, you know, because okay. they just they generate like you know this is such an industry term, big numbers, but like they they do really well in their in their hometown. And as me as a manager, all I'm trying to do is like put on the best show possible, and I'm trying to like help out other people along the way. So and there there's a lot of you know there's a lot of like relationships that get involved when when you even just go out for for a night, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Well, I guess um, the the last question um, that that I'll ask is you you as a manager, what are what are a few things that you automatically right off the bat uh, say, hey band, you need to fix this, you know, you need to polish this off. What are what are some things that usually need to be improved upon on a new rough raw band? Um, everything from being like actively, you know, actively on social media, like that's such a huge thing now. There's like these uh. You know, like the YouTuber community. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm talking about like Brian Stars and all the. Yeah. It's so crazy how engaged with with their fans that they are. It's like they they can't go like an hour or two without doing something on the internet. You know, yeah. but it's it's like it's it, it is really important now. It's it's so crazy, but it's it's super. So I, I tell them that they need to be more in touch with their fans. Uh, songwriting is always a huge thing for an, for any band. You know, mm-hmm. so, like just the songs. And if you don't have the songs, you're not gonna you're not gonna get to the next level. That's what I mean by by like the whole package. Like, if you can build up a strong following at home, and if people are like you know gravitating towards it, then it, then it has a place somewhere. Mm-hmm. How you important know? is uh, pre production and kind of refining your songwriting before going into the studio for a band? Uh, pre production is probably almost more important than the actual recording process itself mm-hmm. because. You, you have to spend time figuring out what it is that you actually want, and then when you have everything executed, then you can go in the studio and be like, okay, I have this planned out, this planned out, let's do it. You know, But a lot of bands just kind of like, a lot of newer bands are like, look, we just want to get in the studio, but they have no idea like what they want like as far as like production goes. Like, oh, like maybe we could add like keys here, or like hand claps, or vocals, or, or, like, or sorry, like group chants, or whatever. You know, but th- these are a lot of things you have to think about too, like when you're, when you're like writing a song and wanting to go record and just making sure like the production's good and that people can remember the chorus that's to me that's like a successful band it yeah. doesn't matter like a super heavy chuggy metal band it just has to be memorable yeah and how how often i i, I tend to encourage bands to do this i'm not sure if this is too important uh you know in, in your eyes but you know whenever i see bands play live uh, you can really tell a professional band versus kind of a small one because they look uncomfortable nothing synced up how, how important is the live show as well Age setup is also everything. Not not saying like you need to go out and like buy like a bunch of you know scrims and ego boxes and, and mm-hmm. crap like that. I'm just saying like it just needs to look like aesthetically good. It needs to look like you guys have been a band for a while. It needs to look like you guys are seasoned people, you mm-hmm. know. And the stage show is just really important in general. You you can it was just like you just said like you could tell right off the bat someone just 
isn't, mm. you know, up, up on their game. You know, if, like, someone's, like, looking down and not, like, communicating with everybody else that's around them, like, it just it just looks bad. Or general. the awkward, long conversations, like, hey, guys, blah, blah, blah. You know, they talk. But you're going to see a show. Like, mm. you, expect the, you expect the show. Like, yeah. People, it's, it's almost like seeing a play or something, you know? Mm. Like, what if, like, what if somebody just stopped in the middle of their play and just, like, weren't doing their job? It's kind of the same thing as being a performer. Yeah. But your job, your job as the band is to captivate the audience and to make sure that they remember you when they walk away. Yeah. Well, awesome, but, Ryan. Thanks. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us, you know, on the Artery vlog. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, much appreciated. Um, if anybody has questions, please leave it in the comment section of this video. Um, we'll get another video going on, you know, coming up here soon, maybe answer some of those. Also, subscribe up here, you know, uh, so we can keep doing that stuff. But, uh, Ryan, it was a pleasure, man. Thanks, man. Uh, if you guys want to follow any of my social stuff, it's just at Ryan Seaman, everything. Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I, have, I have like a, a like page on Facebook, so I, I usually get back to people. So. Perfect. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure to tag you in all this, you know, when this cool. goes live and, you know, people can hit you up. Sweet. Thanks awesome. for having me. Really appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, dude. Bye. Archery recordings.